The blacksmith strikes the anvil. The blacksmith then was the most respected man in society, a man you did not cross. For he was the man that was credited with making the brooch for the mother of God, and as a result, the gift to make all his own tools. He was the only tradesman to make his own tools, was the blacksmith. The bellows to light the fire for the fire immediately the iron to shape it. And here then you have the making and the shooting of a wheel of a cart. Mm. The wheel of a cart is made up of three different timbers. Elm and the nave, oak and the spokes, ash and the feathers. And when at school there was a poem I was taught, the village blacksmith, I'm sure some of you too will remember it. Mm. Under the spreading chestnut tree the village smithy stands. The smith the mighty man was he with large and sinewed hands. The muscles of his brawny arms were as strong as iron bands. The iron bands of which he was referring to, no doubt in that poem, was the tire of the cart that had to be shaped and forged welded with little stint of his own arms. Then I wondered why did, he, why did Longfellow make such an issue out of the spreading chestnut tree? What was so important that he mentioned the spreading chestnut tree at all? Well, many people would say it was for shade and for shelter, and some would say it was for the timber. And maybe so. So far for me, the most interesting answer I got came when this family donated this forge to me. Eight generations of them blacksmiths, the old man 82 years of age, and that was five or six years ago. And when that old man was here one evening, I asked him could he throw any light in the poem as to why Longfellow may have mentioned the spreading chestnut tree. And the old man didn't hesitate. He told me to go out and get the branch of a chestnut tree, study the bark of it and see what you'll see on it. Any idea what you'll see in the branch of the chestnut tree if you study the bark of it? <laughs> well, when you study the bark of the branch of the chestnut tree, on the bark of it you'll see little horseshoes. How many nails are used to attach a horseshoe to a horse's hoof? The answer is the most prominent number in the Bible. And the most prominent number in the Bible is seven. God rested from his great work on the seventh day. And here is the branch of the chestnut three. And over here, I do not wish you to leave and say that I had them painted on. Mm -hmm. When you break off the leaf, you'll see the little horseshoes. You see them all the way down. Break off the leaf, and there's the little horseshoes all the way down. Do you see them? And when you study, you see that the seven dots are there to signify then where the seven nails go. Three, nail, three dots come down on the left, four go up on the right. Three dots coming down on the left, four going up on the right. Three nails goes on the inside of the hoof, four on the outside. And that is the way a farrier shoes a working horse in the branch of the chestnut tree. A timber plough with an oak chair, no nails on it but timber dowling, shaft going to the right, pulled by a donkey, and this plough is at least 130 years old from this region. And finally to the section. In 1990, I went up to a little village called Kilkelly mm. to Merton Harrison, who had been a blacksmith. He was born in 1900. He was 90 years of age. When I went to him, he had been a blacksmith, and when I was with him, he went looking for a few bits and pieces to give to me. And he came across that. He said, bring that with you. That will confuse them. Mm -hmm. I can honestly say that I did not know what it was myself. I wasn't that good of a genius to figure it out. Mm -hmm. So I asked him what it was, and he said, it's a round square. A round square. Now, anyone that went to school in the 40s, 50s, 60s, knows the consequences of making that statement around square. I rest you assured you wouldn't come home with a bouquet of flowers, whatever else you come home with. Mm -hmm. Right? So I asked Martin Harrison to explain a round square. He gave me that chair, which is red lead, which was the paint for painting the wheel of the cart. And to explain a round square, that's exactly what he done with it. And I dissected the circle. Mm -hmm. And he went two ways, and it gave him the centre point. And it was from that then that he could calculate where the centre point that the wheel of the cart was, right, for boring mm. it. Mm. And in the 15, 16 years that I'm doing those tours, only one person was ever able to tell me what that was. And I would see people of all mm. grades going through here. And it was a tour from Davo College, Castle Bear. There was 42 kids involved. There was a European school in it. And I just asked the kids, 14 to 15 year olds to wear. And I asked them and I said, to them, I said, I need to figure out what that might do. And they were saying, well, there's two right angles there, and blah, 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 mm. this and that. And next thing, this young fellow stuck his head between two of them, and he said, that will dissect a circle. I said, really? <laughs> I said, when were you here last? Mm -hmm. I was never here. You were never here. Mm. I said, mm. how did you read it? Mm. He said, PYR squared. Yeah. I said, what did you say? Pi. 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 Said, mm. He said, there's Y, and there's an R. He said, mm. in the right Pi. angle, he said, it will dissect the circle. I said, what part of England are you from? I'm not English, I'm German. And I didn't even mention the war. I didn't even mention the war. Huh? <laughs>